Must a YouTube content creator also seek authorization from UCC to have their content authorized for publication? Or is it only limited to newspapers or only t televisions? If you have these questions and you'd like to know the answers to, please stick around to this YouTube video because I am going to break down for you exactly what content falls under the criteria uh, stipulated under the new UCC public Hello. notice. My name is Nagaev Joan and welcome to the Ask Me About the Law YouTube channel. So the Ask Me About the Law YouTube channel is a place where we have free and honest conversations about the law, especially in regards to commercial and cyber spaces. If this sounds like something that you're interested in, please like this video, go back to the homepage, like this YouTube channel, also hit the notification bell so that you are notified every time I release new content and I release new content religiously every week. I release content on anything that is trending, relevant and break it down for you so that you can understand. So first things first, who is this um, public notice directed to? Allow me to quote if you haven't had the time to read through the notice and I quote, it says that all persons currently offering or planning to commence the provision of online data, communication, broadcasting services, including but not limited to blogs, online television, online radios, online newspapers, audio over IP, internet protocol TV, video on demand, um, digital audio tele radios and televisions, internet web, radio, internet web, television and radio should all uh, obtain authorization from UCC before proceeding such services to the public. So at this point in time, I believe we need to know first of all what is UCC. For purposes of this video, UCC is the Uganda Communications Commission. For purposes of this video, I will keep on referring to the Act. Section 4 of this Act provides that UCC is the official regulator in Uganda. Section 4 provides that UCC is the official regulator and moderator of communications in uganda by by communication i mean postal uh, television online and also the infrastructure the infrastructure is the the systems that fuel the functioning of a proper uh, infrastructure for the existence of new of newspapers uh, television content as well as social media content so ucc is the big organization that is supposed to make sure everything is smooth it also by the way also regulates the functionality of telecommunication companies by telecommunication companies i mean people like mtn airtel so they go to ucc ucc gives them a license it gives them a license after they meet criteria that are mandated under the act that um establish what um a functioning functioning telecommunicate telecommunications provider is supposed to look like, function like, and also operate like. So upon UCC ensuring that they meet the criteria, then UCC gives them a license. The same applies for TV. You apply as a, as a, as a television station, for example, NTV or NBS, they need to first get a license from UCC before they can operate. Same applies to radios and newspapers. So UCC is that big organization that gives that authorization. So section five of the act also grants UCC the mandate to regulate, supervise, license, authorize, uh, investigate, um, basically all those things that are there to ensure that you, that uh, an individual is held accountable in while conducting their businesses, UCC does this responsibility. Now these section four and section five are some of the provisions that UCC is flaunting right now to justify the publication of the notice and also to uh, ensure its enforcement on Ugandans, especially uh, online content creators and data and communication providers. Regulations 5 of the Uganda Communications Content Regulation 2019 of the Laws of Uganda provides that uh, UCC, in conducting its licensing, uh, supervising, monitoring of content in Uganda, will look at the following content creators in 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 line of um, in line of it regulating content and monitoring content in uganda the first type of content that ucc is going to monitor is content carried by operators and don't worry i'm going to break down what this really means so section two of the uganda commission's content regulation 2019 of the laws of uganda defined an operator to mean any individual licensed by ucc obviously to to provide telecommunications, postal and broadcasting services. So that is an individual who is defined as a 
broadcast as sorry as an operator for purposes of this youtube video i'd like you to contextualize every time you hear me talk about a person uh the law defines in the purposes of this blog defines um a person to mean not only an individual but also an entity a corporation an, uh, an industry an organization so don't think of person in the context of one human being think of it uh um Think of it in relation to the context I'm speaking in. I hope that makes sense. Section 2 of the Uganda Communications Act 2013 of the laws of Uganda defines what is telecommunications and allow me to quote verbatimly what the law provides. It states that telecommunication means the emission, transmission or reception through the agency of electricity or electromagnetics, magnetism of or electromagnetism of any sound, signals, signs, writings, images or intelligence of any nature by wire, radio, optical, or other electrical systems, whether or not such, uh, such signs, signals, writings, images, sounds, or intelligence have been subject to rearrangement, computing, or any other processes by any means in the course of transmission, em emission, or reception. So what this means is that to qualify as telecommunications, I'm going to give examples. I hope they will explain the bigger picture. So case in point, this video is a telecommunication because I'm going to make it and I'm going to post it online. Then you will watch it. The context, the entire chain of um, from the process of making the video to the process of you watching is a telecommunication. If this video is sent via WhatsApp, it's still a telecommunication. When you create the, the podcast, which I'm going to leave links in the description box of this video, it's also a telecommunication. If um, you watch this YouTube video by Fortunate Luck and it's shared on TV, it's still a telecommunication. If we find a way of breaking down this video into images and very small videos it's still a telecommunication if you create content and uh, then newspaper articles it is telecommunication if you even if you download this video and then make adjustments to it it's still telecommunication if you share images of anything it's still telecommunication if you share any form of intelligence right it's still telecommunication that's what section two defines a telecommunication so as you can see it's a very very broad definition that tries to never to encompass all that um all the context and i have not been by the very elaborate in the definition of what a telecommunication is but i'm trying to use very practical examples which are relevant to you as an individual so if you feel like you have more examples that would be relevant or that you'd want to us to discuss about and see if they fall under the definition of telecommunications please leave them in the description box of this sorry in the comment section of this video so that we can keep having this conversation and understand exactly what this public notice means so the act also proceeds to define what is broadcasting and it defines broadcasting as the transmission of sound video or audio um, which is intended to for stimulation for for stimulation by the public so what this means is um, what uh, we're going to make this video, edit it, then post it online on YouTube. So you, the process that we're, that by posting that video online on YouTube, we are carrying out what we call broadcasting. Um, the same applies to uh, a podcast. If you create the content of the, your podcast and then you share it online and people are going to engage with that content, according to the law, it's still broadcasting. If you uh, remember the, the definition of broadcasting also contextualizes data. So if you share, um, if you share a video, if you share any video on your Facebook page, that is still broadcasting. If you share a video on your IGTV, on your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, technically that's broadcasting. So as you can see, broadcasting is not only limited to YouTube. It's something that is very wide. It's not only limited to TV. Uh, radio it also applies to podcasts and social media so the context is really very wide and yes it is intended to capture almost any online activity and as per the new ucc regulations if you are broadcasting you have to apply for authorization oddly enough the law define the act defines a broadcaster as a licensed person that it packages and distributes television and radio programs so it's a little bit uh, not in harmony with uh, broadcasting 
But anyway, now that you've understood the difference between broadcasting and broadcaster, remember, broadcasting according to the definition provided by the law of Uganda is can apply to anything, your social media, your Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, whatever. And then broadcaster is someone who's licensed by, who has a license under the laws of Uganda to carry out, uh, to package, distribute television and uh, radio programs. So that is the definition of, of a broadcaster under the laws of Uganda. So this is what I personally find as uh, very taunting as uh, an online content maker and distributor. See, according to the laws of Uganda and according to the definitions I've given you, everything I make from now on is going to be um, monitored, supervised, and I also have to seek authorization from UCC. If that doesn't rattle you as an individual, I don't know what is. Because if I have to seek permission to share basic things like from as simple as just a social media handle, right, then where is my freedom, t freedom of expression, freedom of opinion, you know, which are guaranteed to me by the Constitution? Um, if I have to first seek for authorization from UCC, who checks UCC? And UCC has the mandate to uh, determine who should be granted the license and who is not. So that's putting a lot of power in an individual. And I want you to factor this in considering our history in Uganda, especially in regards to freedom of opinion and expression. Um, I'm going to leave a link in the description box of this video with um, the blog I wrote about Dr. Stella Nyanzi's uh, case and arrest, as well as uh, Kakwenza. Kakwenza, Kakwenza wrote a book, The Greedy Barbarian, and the events that unfolded re really raised a very, very vicious debate on the rights and freedom of opinions of Uganda. Ugandan, sorry. So I'm scared. I'm scared for us as a country if we have to seek authorization for things like that. And then the other, the second uh, reservations that many people have as Ugandans, especially now in regards to content creation, is the fact that <coughs> now with the, this new um, this new UCC uh, regulation rolling out is that it it is so broad in that it will capture uh, content creators on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, any social media, basically anywhere online, as long as you're sharing your opinion, according to UCC, you will need authorization. But then the question is now, remember in content creation, there's something we have, there's a discussion in regards to traffic. You know, you find followers, uh, people like Shumba, um, uh, or, or the political pages on Facebook who have, uh, heavy traffic and they have like one like 10k followers 100k followers and then you find an individual like me now on my youtube channel i think i have like 24 followers or something like that so uh are we going to all pay the same licensing fees i mean what is the criteria for determining who pays what and then again it also going to, it's also going to have a ripple effect because now that the the charge rates of content creators are going to increase because now they have to also factor in the, the fees they have to pay on licensing and also remember is a huge requirement um, during the li during the application of the licensing process as per the new regulations you also have to attach your financials so if you're going to seek for the authorization you apply for a formal license on top of a formal license then you also have to put your financials your financial statement and I think that's what UCC is going to gauge on to uh, determine how much it each um content creator is going to pay but then now it's it's a bit tricky because i don't know it's it's just very peculiar so things like that are going to you know follow now there's also another provision under the ucc regulation that says that ucc has the mandate to determine if it will grant you the license or it will not so this means that in as much as yes you're going to follow through and seek the and apply for the license and state your financials ucc at the end of the day has the bottom line to say we're going to give person either license or we're not going to give person either sorry the authorization slash license or we're not so it's it makes things tricky eh? uh, imagine if you're on youtube and you also have to remember you have to maintain your content calendar and be consistent but then there's this whole of you know ucc still going through it's time i think it's around 60 days to 
grant you their authorization then so so for 60 days then you do not load content it's interesting and i think i'm very curious to see how they're going to enforce and implement right and i'm going to explain uh, this we're going to have another conversation on how they want to enforce and implement this provision but for purposes of this discussion let us first stick to what content they're looking to regulate so b you so UCC also says it's going to regulate content that is being shared through content service providers. This also includes the third party content providers as well as the content operate uh, the, the content which is shared through the content operator. B, uh, allow me to quote verbatim Lee. UCC says it will also uh, regulate content service providers including third party content providers transmitting content through an operator. So a content provider is anyone under the laws of Uganda. The, the act defines a content provider as any person who is licensed. Or it can be an entity that is allowed to provide content services to content creators. Now that person has to be licensed under the laws of Uganda. Content services can be some, some something like Facebook. It allows you to you know, post, comment, share, share content online, uh, YouTube. It allows you to post videos, you share those videos. So. YouTube would be someone who would define as a content service provider. Now, a content operator is someone, like I said, who is licensed under the laws of Uganda to share, distribute content. So someone like that would be uh, whoever you buy your data from, right? Now, I am cheap, so <laughs> I'm very cheap. So sometimes, you know, when the wallet is cheap, I, I go over to my neighbors, use their Wi-Fi, and that's how I post my videos. So um, what that means, uh, that's how I post my videos, or I'll just go to a fancy cafe and, you know, buy a bottle of water and, yes, and use their Wi-Fi, except that water sometimes is unnecessarily expensive for no reason, and the Wi-Fi is slow, telling you guys the pain. But anyway, when I'm going to share this video, I'm going to go to a cafe, my neighbor's Wi-Fi or a friend's Wi-Fi, and use their friend's Wi-Fi. Now, whoever they're buying the data from, Smile, Airtel, MTN, whoever really, that is what we'd call a content, uh, a content operator, sorry, or just an operator. That is someone who provides you the data, the MBs that you're going to use to share that content. Remember, operator, think of the data provider, MTN, Airtel, Smile, whatever, the person you buy your data from. The content provider, uh, content provider, content content provider is someone who allows you, gives you the platform for you to share the content. This is someone like YouTube, Facebook, whatever. That is the what the content provider. The content services is the activities you do online. So Facebook allows you to share the videos. YouTube allows you to create and upload videos, which then you can distribute and share of the content. Content is the information i am sharing with you guys now what i am um, uh, what i am talking i'm talking to the camera right now i'm going to edit afterwards then i'm going to upload so the the information i am sharing with you the intelligence is what is called the content so content can uh, is not only videos it can be images people who do photography your content is photography it's images people who do memes your content is memes uh, individuals who do uh, uh, individuals who do a podcast, your content is audio. Your content is still uh, qualifies under the laws of Uganda to amount to content because it is intelligence. Yeah, that is what they mean by the entire cycle. So, all those people, um, anything you upload according to the laws of Uganda right now, when I upload this video, right, UCC is going to start monitoring it, it's going to monitor it. When I upload it on YouTube, this is going to monitor it. When I share it on Facebook, this is going to monitor it uh, through the data provider, right? Because when you're when you're loading the data, there, there there's some fancy fancy things that happen in the background, and you, you can keep track. You know, when I share it on Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, LinkedIn, whatever, this is going to be monitoring and it's going to be keeping track. Since UCC is watching this, I just think it is it is long overdue that i say hi ucc how are you my name is eve joanna gawa so i just wanted you guys to know that ott seriously eh, we need to talk about ott not it is making life complicated but yes ucc yes anyway hi bye now back to serious business see 
Now, uh, remember we're talking about content that UCC is allowed to monitor, regulate, supervise, and just generally, it's a peeping tom. Uh, C. C is content relating to postal articles. So postal articles, think of it like just anything that is in document form, eh? from letters. Think of it, if you're having letters that are coming from abroad and you know maybe you bought something online, or you have a friend, a pen pal, a girlfriend that's sending you a letter online and they're using the postal services, UCC has the right under the laws of Uganda and content regulations to monitor. By monitoring, I mean they can actually open that letter and read it if the need arises. So if you buy a parcel online, all that content under, UC under the laws of Uganda, UCC has the right to you know, see through. Uh, now let's go in detail. Pamphlet, books, text, uh, parcels, um, small packets, large packets. As long as it has a document to it, a piece of paper, technically UCC has a right to snoop through it. I hope that now makes sense because now it also brings into question things like the right to privacy because technically you're entitled to the right to privacy. But then again, um, since in all transparency i'm supposed to give you both sides that right is not really up uh, it's not something that you know you are is is absolute for lack of a better word um it's not something that is engraved in stone right so there are certain situations that may arise and legally that right may be wavered but ideally uh as a ugandan you are entitled to the right to privacy so content personal articles and uh, content under the laws of Uganda, UCC is allowed to snoop, monitor, and see what is in your parcel, your email, your your mail, or whatever that is coming from, uh, that is coming from abroad or is being shared by an operator. Now, the, the context of this also includes uh, documents, newspapers, books. So, if you buy your newspapers, people who like reading newspapers, um, uh, outsource newspapers, for example, Kenya, um, um, also magazines that are from abroad and they have to pass through uh, um, international poster union technically ucc has a right to snoop through them and see what is in the content give an example if you buy a book like let me say uh my let, let's say if kakwenza's book if kakwenza was based in kenya and kakwenza and i purchased a book here uh if the laws of uganda define kakwenza's book as immoral then the laws of Uganda allow you to see the mandate to monitor my mail and if I have such a package as Kakwenza's book, technically the UCC can intercept, destroy that content before I receive it. So yes, do you now see what I mean when I say UCC has power, like absolute power? So this is like the big boogeyman. You should be afraid. Like, very afraid if i were you i'd be afraid i i am me and i'm very terrified anyway so last but not least ucc was also guaranteed under the content regulations of 2019 to also monitor advertisement that is conducted so this is broad so any advertisements that's on tv radio um newspapers anywhere uh, ideally, it's not supposed to contravene any laws of Uganda, but I think the huge discussion here is in regards to morality. That's where the huge debate is. Um, if you remember, there have been very many, um, very many advertisements, uh, adverts, ads in Uganda that have been halted because they did not meet the UCC regulations and criteria. I think there was that Bosco ad, that MTN Bosco ad, which. There was also some very fishy, fishy things that led to the deportation of the, I think, uh, the UCC, uh, the the MTN boss. So in Uganda, like, see now all those like, if UCC sees your advert and it deems that your advert is in violation of the laws of Uganda, technically you will have to take that advert down, and you may face any penalties from UCC as UCC deems fit. So all the adverts you run at this point in time will be regulated by UCC. Now this also goes to now that the public notice is available and remember to qualify for the public notice you also have to follow the laws of Uganda and meet their obligations. So that means that also uh, content creators that generate money by running ads you have to be very uh, careful the ads you run. They also have to be they have to meet the laws of Uganda if they uh, 
in any way violates the laws of Uganda. I think what should be what you should keep in mind is things like witchcraft. The laws of Uganda are anti witchcraft. So if you ever decide to, you know, run an ad that the laws of Uganda deem is amounting to witchcraft, yeah. You're gonna. Yeah, so uh, this is something I need I need you to put I need you guys to think about when you are running your ads. So according to the laws of Uganda, I think I need to first define what an ad is. And an ad, according to the laws of Uganda, is um, any content that you share in return for payment and you also encourage your users by making suggestions, opinions, or influencing their conduct can amount to running an ad. So what do I mean by this? If I, if I, you know, case in point, if I am like, oh my God, you guys, this bottle is so nice. Like, you guys need to check it out. Right. Even if uh, even if the makers of the bottle do not pay me, right? Technically, I've just run an ad for them. Another example is if I say, "Oh my God, you guys need to check out that bottle," and you guys go and check it out, that is still running an ad. Even if you do not buy, technically, that's an ad. Now, if we have a working arrangement with the makers of the bottle and they pay me f uh, just for me to say, "Oh my God, this bottle looks so cute." then that's an ad so in all those contexts you need to be very careful as a content creator how or the ads you decide to run because the ads you decide to run really lead you into big trouble especially now with the new ucc public notice you're watching they asked me about the law youtube channel a place where we have free and honest conversations about the law and i was your host nagawa Jawan. If you have any comments, feedback, suggestions, please leave them under this video in the comment section. I always, always endeavor to reply to each and every comment. If you enjoyed this video, kindly give it a thumbs up. If you have any comment, feedback, please leave them in the comment section of this video. I really look forward from, to listening from you guys. If you have any questions, inquiries, comment section, or you can also check out our social media handles, the handles that are asking about the law. I'm going to leave them linked in the description box of this video. Kindly check them out. Also, if you'd like to talk to me, I'm going to leave my socials in the description box of this video. Check it out. Remember, wear your mask. Stay safe.